This is a story of a historical landmark in the tri-state area of Tennessee, Kentucky, and Virginia. Everybody remembers this spot. So, yes, it's still there, but not like it was. This is just to show the memories of what it used to be. Now, this is not affiliated with any national park or any other tourist sites. This is just a personal video on the history of the tri-state area and the history of Cudjoe's Cave. But first, let's get started on how it got started, how it got its name, and how it got its humble beginnings. Now this gap in the mountain has stood the test of time for eons. The Indians used it for thousands of years. Before that, the buffalo. And it holds a lot of history above and below ground. Now looking at this old mountain, you wouldn't think it'd have all these caves in it, but it is hollow. This limestone holds a lot of caves. Now the first settlers in here to explore this country officially was in 1750, and it was Dr. Thomas Walker. He was surveying land on into Kentucky to, to be maybe settled later. And he, he noticed here when he come through the gap, discovered it, that there was a good water source. He noted that in his journal that he kept, that it was sufficient water source for a good meal. And later, Daniel Boone, in 1775, blazed the wilderness road through here. And the rest is history. Thousands upon thousands of people migrated through this road. And at first, about 1800, they started mining saltpeter in this cave. They called it the Big Saltpeter Cave. That was the first name of this cave above the gap. And as the Civil War come in, it changed hands four times here between the north and the south. It was a strategic place in this gap in the mountains. But nobody never had no major engagements. Thousands of troops from both sides marched through this gap all through the war, trying to outmaneuver the other without fighting. Now there was a lot of skirmishing went around the edge of this gap, but no major engagement. Nobody was ever crazy enough to risk their whole army to take this defensive stronghold. And I'm sure the soldiers done a lot of exploring in their downtime in this cave. It was so beautiful in nature and just wild. They called it the Soldier's Cave, because that time was the second name. They've even talked that they had military hospital in the cave in some of these big rooms, and people had engraved their names from that time on the walls. Now this old cave, the first, the third name, they call it King Solomon's Cave. And there was two entrances to it. Now they connected up way back in there, but up close they didn't. So they, they dug a tunnel between the Soldier's Cave and King Solomon's Cave, which is all really the same cave. But in 1864, there was a book wrote by J.T. Throwbridge about a runaway slave or escaped slave that hid out in a cave called Cudgel's Cave. Now this, this became a popular book, and as years went on, they changed the name for the tourist to Cudgel's Cave. That's how it got its name. And in 1920s, LMU bought the cave, the rights to it, and they put lights and electricity in it and opened it in 1934. Now here's some early pictures of when they first got started for tourism in this cave. Old 
old pictures of time gone by. And they kept upgrading this road every decade or so, trying to widen it. And they started into the tourists now real good, trying to draw people in. Now, in 1947, the title to the cave transferred to the Commonwealth of Virginia. I guess they wanted the cave rights because of the, uh, the culture of the cave and to preserve it. But LMU, I think, still operated it till the park took over. And here's some old pictures, beautiful old pictures. This would be the time of when I was a little boy where my fathers and grandfathers stopped at this place. They started advertising real good. I've passed this place personally thousands of times going to work over the years. And here's an old picture where they give tours back in the 70s, 80s. Here's some of their brochures they had for the cave, for the tourists. Time gone by. I remember all the little trinkets you'd buy in the gift shop. And they made some upgrades over the years for the tourists in the entrances and exits where they uh, tried to upgrade best they could. But in 1992, the National Park Service took it over. They acquired all the title to it. And it became known as the Gap Cave. That was the final name give to it. Now we all remember this old road across the mountain. Old Massacre Mountain they called it. And here's what it looks like today. What's left of it. They replaced it all and made it all a natural road again. Now here's the new road that goes in the Cumberland Gap Tunnel under Cumberland Mountain. It's just to the left side if you're going north of the original Cumberland Gap. Now the National Park, they kept giving tours in there when they first took it over in 92, but that only lasted for a short period of time. They shut it down to uh, take care of a lot of stuff in there and upgrade a little bit. They took all the electrical lights out, all the electricity, cleaned up all the trash from over the years that's accumulated for decades. And then they reopened it in the late 90s, about 2000. And here's what the mountain looks like if you took a section view of it, where the caves is at, how the, how the lay of the rock is. I always thought that was nice to see, how the caves are in it. You never think that by looking at it. They still, to this day, exploring this cave. Now here's some pictures of the cave itself. Some old, some new. Just enjoy.
Now they say this cave had six entrances at one time. They had the Gap Cave, which is the same as King Solomon's, and Cudgel's Cave, that's the main entrance. Then the Soldier's Cave, which they connected together, there's another entrance, and the Salt Peter's Cave, that was the same entrance. And then the Whale Hole Cave entrance, that's where the water comes out under the old highway above the Iron Furnace. A lot of history. I can only just tell you portions of what has happened over the years in this old gap. Now to this day, the CRL, the Cave Research Foundation, has been exploring this cave. And as of 2015, they've been 18.5 miles mapped and more yet to be explored. They haven't explored it all. There's a lot of different levels in this old cave. It is the 42nd largest cave in the United States and the 154th largest in the world. That's documented. Now, there's a lot of history above it. It's beautiful above it. You're standing right above the cave when you're on the pinnacle. Beautiful. This is an old picture from time gone by. And I sure wished I could buy cigarettes here. They sure was cheap. But this is an old picture from the 50s. Anybody in the last two generations remember this place awful well. So, a lot of history has passed this old road. It's all gone now. It's only in our memories. Like I said, the last two generations remember this old road too, Massacre Mountain. So I hope you enjoyed this today. The memories will never leave and never fade. Maybe the, the terrain will change, but never our memories. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.